Hey everybody, Kimberly here, and I have to tell you one of the most exciting games that I played last summer was Kinfire Chronicles Knights Fall. I have the entire box and the upgrade kit here. I cannot wait to show you what's in there because even the game version, the prototype that I played, wasn't as souped up as this final product. And not only does the production quality match the gameplay and the artwork, it just far exceeds everything I was so enthralled with. And I cannot wait to get back into this campaign cooperative experience and just show you all the cool stuff inside the boxes. So I have to say right from the start, this is the coolest box lid and I waited to take it off because it actually is magnetic and becomes where you play the actual game itself. So if you just take this off, it kind of just snaps off and then you can see that when you flip it over, now it becomes the place where you play. So it's fantastic. I love that idea. And I'm going to show you more of this in just a little bit because I can't wait to show you like what's actually in here. So let me turn this around to where you see the beautiful, there we go, the beautiful welcome. Begin your journey through Atios. It has that nice little ribbon. I'm going to pull this up and I can take this whole thing out and you're going to see the inside. Now, this is where you get, I mean, look at that, even the artwork on the outside of each one of these adventures, each one of these journeys, each one of these missions is numbered. You've got one to 21, and each one is part of this beautiful picture on the outside. Everything you need is right here inside of this little pouch. So it says here, quest one, the road to Vina. Boom. All you need to, I mean, look at that. Oh, the artwork is so good. All you do is flip it up, you're going to read this story and everything that you need. That's one thing that I love so much about this game is everything is right there. You don't have to look at a rule book. I don't think you notice that there's like no real rule book because everything tells you inside of each scenario how to play, how the mechanics work and how the game comes together. So you not only get the story, you read this, open the atlas to map one and then read card one one. And inside of here, you've got everything you need to complete the mission and every single scenario has one of these stacks and these stacks of cards you read uh, essentially from top to bottom and it, you read the card that it tells you to read when uh, it tells you to read it. So you've got these in here and this is again, this is just so beautiful. It's so well done. I love how the artwork fits together and you've got all of those missions. And so those are all in here just lined up ready to go. Over here on the side, you've got all six of the characters that have their own unique decks, their own unique abilities or lanterns that they get to use, and just the way that they play is so vastly different. I played Naz of the Wind Strikes whenever I played my run through and whenever I played um, with my husband. I, I just really liked, this is the Orcish Strategist. And I really liked how she played. Uh, I liked that she was a real fighter. You get some stats here and you also get like why she's a tactician. A little bit of story. And then if you open up her uh, box and bits and stuff, you're gonna get that character uh, sheet and information. You've got this, it's nice. Let me show you underneath the camera. This is that dual layered board. You can see there's your character. Um, here's what you do on your turn. It's just so clear and it's so obvious. They have spaces for your trackers and for your markers and it tells you exactly what to do. I mean, it's just stunning. And this is yet again, oh my gosh, look at this. That's fantastic. And here's their dial. This is how many health that you have. You're going to put that dial uh, together so that you can keep track of your, your hit points. So this is Naz. I'm going to put her uh, card right back in there. Um, and then she's also got her figure. I'm going to take this figure out because, I mean, these are by far my favorite part of this game is that you've got these not um, plastic minis or those kind of figures that are these gray blobs and you don't have to paint them because you've got, look at that, there's the back side. Oh, it's different artwork on either side. And then you've got the stand that she goes in and her color is essentially um, that, that orange color. And there she is. She's got her stand fit. I mean, gosh, this is just stunning. It looks so, so good. 
And like I said, each character is going to have their own deck. These cards feel so, so good. There's that lantern I told you about. Everybody's going to have that specialty lantern that makes their character interesting and unique. Um, and you're going to have these cards that tell you exactly how much damage and what type of damage it does with a little bit of fun flavor text. I love this stuff. Duel of Honor. There's your boost card. Uh, there are cards in here that boost uh, based on the particular type uh, of action you play because there are blue cards, red cards, and green cards. And those are going to be essentially the three different types uh, of, of attack and fight. And then your whites are your uh, kind of like wild. Uh, it's fantastic. Oh, these are so good. They're so clear. I love that they didn't feel the need to, you know, do too much fancy business or anything like that. You can tell it's Naz's cards because they've got her picture right there on the side. Um, but I love that basic artwork right there, the name. It's just so clear and easy to read. These cards are just so good. They feel good. They look good. They look clean. I love, love, love the look of this. So I'm going to slide this back in here. And I have to tell you, honestly, I was really surprised after playing through, I think I played seven scenarios uh, before I did my run through at Rado's channel. And after I got done playing, I'm gonna slide her back in right here where she goes. Um, after I played her, there's a lot of nice stuffing so that people don't, uh, oh, I think I might've put the box in a little goofy. Is that right? Oh no, I put the box in, right? Okay, sorry, you never know. I don't want to stuff things up. I don't want to get things uh, clogged up. I think it's because of the stuffing in here. I'm going to slide. There we go. See? Super easy. I'm going to take out these little styrofoams. Um, I was really surprised at how the other characters functioned and worked. Um, so I think it was, um, I want to say, uh, I think it was Asha or Valora is who Lewis played when we played together. And then I found myself very, very interested in the human bard. After playing through everything, I think when I play this um, brand new box and everything, I'm going to start the campaign over. I'm going to play with three players. I think I want to play Fane Longstride. And I've never wanted to play a bard in my life. Um, and so I think it's going to be a fantastic opportunity to play the bard. And for me to be super interested in the kind of character that I am human. I've never really been drawn to humans. Um, I think that's just fantastic. It's so, so exciting. Um, so all the characters are going to have this box just like I showed you with Naz. And they're all in here ready to pick, ready to take advantage of. I'm going to take out this last stuffing right here and I'm going to pull this out. This is your giant box. Um, you can see here, I'm going to push this aside for now. Um, and you can kind of still see that in the foreground. Sorry about that. But this is your um, kind of like a treasure box. This is where you get to keep everything uh, for the game. You've got the void box. You also have all these really cool um, little envelopes that just essentially say uh, it's, it's like a sticker. Everything has like it, these little stickers. And there are just tons of these. You can see uh, I've got like six of those and six of the gold boxes. You can see that this one even has... Um, Yet again, another gold uh, cover. So you've got your copper, I think your gold, and you've got your silver uh, for your uh, really cool little envelopes that again are all sealed. I love nothing more than secret envelopes that have stickers and tell you not to open them. That's just a, a real favorite. And then here's this one. This one just says three. Who knows what this one is? That's just real secret and fun. And then you've got your boxes here that have just even more you got cards. Oh, and they're sealed too. You can't even get into them. And then here are going to be some of the cards that you use. You've got um, uh, Vina Pack, Din Lux Pack, Din Lux Pack 2, and then you've got this massive stack here, which is your Din Lux Pack 1. And so anytime you need to get into anything, they're going to tell you to just reach in here and grab this. And when you do your story, like when you go down that very first adventure, you open up the cards that it tells you to, and it teaches you the game. So I just think that's amazing. So let me take a look. This is the last thing that was in the very top of the box. Here's your map atlas. This is going to take you to all the places you need to go with this nice spiral bound uh, ring. And you have all your different locations. I mean, this looks so 
good. And when you play these games, I kind of, I think Gloomhaven kind of opened up the opportunity um, with Jaws of the Lion for this kind of approach where you have a spiral bound notebook, you don't have tiles, you don't have bits and pieces, you just have a board that has a pre-printed image of the location where you're going to battle, you're going to explore, you're going to adventure, you're going to um, maybe gear up or level up. Um, in these role-playing adventures. And so I just wanted to show you a couple of these pictures because, wow, these just look so, so good. So this is just beautiful, beautiful. Oh my gosh, I mean, I'm just so excited. One more page, maybe one more page. You don't know what the context is. <gasps> oh my gosh, this looks so exciting. <laughs> And I remember, I remember playing a couple of these scenarios. They're all familiar to me, but wow. I mean, you have this whole book that tells you exactly, um, you know, where to go and how to set things up. It's just so beautiful and easy. I love it. I love it. I love it. They have rule book one getting started, but look at this. It's just so easy. This setup, it's just so easy to get going. I adore it. I adore it. Um, so the other thing here is these are all the health dials and these are the action tokens for your villains. So I'm going to take this guy and put it right over here. Um, I've got the cards. These are going to be your um, effect cards if you're weak, stunned, and so forth. There are armor cards that you can add to your deck. Of course, you can be hurt as well. And then I've got some standees and some figures. And then this is the cool thing. This is the thing that I'm most excited about. Uh, I'm going to show you the acrylic pieces because these are going to be the, um, uh, they still have a really, really, really nice feel. So these are going to be the tokens that you put in the bag and you reach in every single time it's someone's turn to play. You will say whose turn to act. Oh, number eight means it's the villains. It's the, uh, you know, aggressors, the, the problems. And they're going to do and activate something very specific with number eight. So your uh, opponents, your, your, your foes do not fight in the same way. I think it was on the box lid. Let me double check. Um, it says that there are um, 48 enemies with unique gameplay. And essentially what that means is that one enemy has a variety of ways to fight. And number eight is just one of the many ways that they fight. Then you resolve that and then you draw again. Oh, look, you got this figure. That's going to be, I, ooh, I say Valora, but what was it? Is it? Yeah, I think I got it right. Dang, I'm good. So that's Valora. <laughs> she is going to act. Whoever's playing that character is going to act. And then you're going to reach in again and you're going to go, oh, it's Valora again. And then you're going to, they're going to go. And that's how you're going to essentially play through uh, combat, which I think is just so cool. So smart. It reminds me so much um, of Aeon's End with the cards and then playing out in the deck. But in this case, you have a set number of your tokens along with the um, foes and they're going to go in here. You don't just put everybody in there. So I'm going to put these guys in here. And then uh, the next thing I want to show you is just the cool, cool upgrade kit because the upgrade kit is uh, where it's at. That's honestly um, the thing I'm maybe most excited about. I think the game is dynamite, but I think that the upgrade kit is uh, just so, so cool. This is it. I wanna show you this, get as much of this on the screen as I can. This is where you put the spiral notebook for your location. Over here, you have all your cards and your effects. Um, so this is your uh, bleeding, burning, poison. This is your momentary loss of strength or weakness, um, environmental elements, confusion or um, um, unconsciousness, armor, and exhaustion. And then on this side over here, you've got, here's how combat works. Here's your time tracker token, fate tokens. You've got your destiny bag, spent chits. Whenever you pull them out of the bag, you're gonna put them uh, over here. And then these are gonna be your cards and how they work. Block, chit redraw, heal, damage, draw, and movement. And there are really, really great clear icons that tell you how to do it. So that's this guy. I'm gonna put this guy right over here and then I'm gonna drag over the upgrade kit. Oh, this is so, so stinking cool. I, I really am excited about this. So the cool thing that players are going to receive is this. This is gonna be your neoprene mat. Now bear with me as I tear into this. All right, 
Remember I was talking about Naz? This is Naz's sheet. She has a lantern space. She's got her super cool fighter, her card deck, discard pile, seeker sheet. This is it. This is amazing. There's Naz. Here's the bard. This is the bard that I told you I was really excited about. Look how cool he is. Oh, I'm so excited. And everybody has totally different like drawings. They have different lanterns. Look at that. Their lanterns aren't the same. They have cool little packs and stuff. So every single one of the six characters gets their very own player mat. I mean, look at this. Done. Done. Amazing. Everyone's in action poses. I mean, come on. How do you not want to play this? This is amazing. This is that fantastically cooperative um, role-playing tabletop experience for adventuring, for exploring, for, um, you know, just straight up puzzly mysteries and, and like this way versus that way, taking missions down different paths along with combat. And there's a little bit of like city uh, building if you want to go to city and town and buy stuff and heal up and do all those really wonderful like role-playing things. This is the thing that I just like got blown away by. These are sleeves. These are your sleeves, your card sleeves. So there's my Naz and she is going to, I love it's double-sided too. These are going to put all of her cards in. These are going to be the sleeves that you use for the characters. Look at this. These characters should look familiar. These are the ones that I just went through. These are all six of them. That artwork is again, just so stunning. I love these characters. Oh my gosh, here's my super cool bard. Look at him. He's got, oh, costume change. Fantastic. And then here's this one. I mean, come on. Don't, don't tell me this isn't the coolest thing in the whole world. I've never had custom sleeves like this before. And then in here, you've got all of those cards that I was talking about and like other, um, you know, blank cards that you can use. Some more chits in this box right here. Um, I'm almost to the cool thing. Here's the super cool coins. Nice, chunky, nice, metallic. I mean, just dynamite. Oh, oh, cool. Look at that. Just another little envelope. Who knows what that goes to? I mean, come on. What? I want to know. It's so cool. And then, this is it. Look at this. These are all the acrylic, like, standees. There are a ton of them. A ton, a ton, a ton, so again, bear with the sound. But let me take out a couple of these figures. They are just so cool. I mean, they're beautiful, they're beautiful. I love them so much. Amazing artwork, just so cool. Ah, oh, one more, one more, one more. Here's this guy, oh, I already did that guy. Look at that guy or lady with those fingernails. So cool. So you have bags and bags and bags of the acrylic monsters and creatures that you're going to encounter. And that's it. That's what's in that upgrade kit. So let me just again, this is it. This is, this is just, I'm just so excited. I think this is cool. I can't, I can't be more excited, honestly. So some of the things that I really like about this game include that every single mission you go on, it's 45 minutes. It really is. It's not really longer than an hour. It's easy to set up. It's easy to get into because you're not reading a massive rule book. Nobody's playing uh, the GM and you are all in it together as a cooperative experience and, and players are invoked. Characters are invoked inside the story world. If you're playing that particular character, you might have an advantage or a disadvantage and it really makes you feel involved and engaged. I love the balance of exploring. I love the balance of storytelling. I love the balance of combat. It feels like everything is just so just enough. And then you move on and do something else. And then you move on and do something else. And there's just a little taste of everything. And I, I like it so much. I love the combat system with drawing chits from the bag to see who acts. It's essentially your initiative order and your act order. It's just so good. You're constantly upgrading and expanding your deck as a character and you have very unique cards that are specialized for your character and not for other characters. And so there are so many different like tests or challenges or skill checks that you make as a character. 
and you just flip over cards from your deck looking for particular results that are based on those types of cards that I mentioned before. I think it's the green, blue, and the red. And those are going to be your challenge. Like I want, I need to get like two of the red cards or two of the green cards to pass this particular skill test. I love it. And this finished product couldn't be better. It couldn't be more awesome. I mean, it's just delightful. It Oh, it's beautiful. It's just so beautiful. And I cannot wait to get into it again uh, with another player uh, to add into the mix. Maybe even four because this does play one to four. I think it's fun. It's fun no matter how many players you have because this is that story experience that you could replay as a different character if you wanted to try out a different style of play, much like I am going to be playing, going from like, you know, Naz, this kind of tank um, to a bard that uh, acts in a very different way. So I'm excited to see how they're going to contribute to the team. Again, love what's in this box. And I love what Campfire Chronicles Knights Fall offers uh, players. I It's just exciting to finally get it and to see it after a year. Um, it, it lives up to everything that I was uh, expecting. So check out my full review after I finish the entire campaign, um, hopefully sooner than later. Uh, but if you haven't heard about this, I hope my excitement shares just a little bit about um, the experience that I had when I played this last summer. Again, I played like seven scenarios and just <laughs> really, really enjoyed it. I just gobbled it up and uh, now I get to gobble it up again. All right, everybody, I'll see you next time.